Hello YouTube, Wilful Ninja here again. As I said, I thought it'd be a fun little gimmick type of thing to uh, be wearing my uh, fencing mask for whenever I'm doing my uh, videos. Um, again, it's a little it doesn't hide the face as often. No, right. but okay. Uh, today it finally arrived. Um, I'm sure many of you who watch my videos. May, I'm not sure if I've ever mentioned it uh, all during, um, how should I put it, my, my videos, my let's plays, my review videos, my discussion videos, I'm not sure if I've ever mentioned it, but I am a huge Warhammer 40k fan, particularly of the Chaos Space Marines. Now... I'm, now, I did have a long... I started back... I think I was in first year. That's going back, I think, nearly 10 or so years. Now, I did take a long break because I got a bit frustrated with not being able to buy models. And also... Um, the person that was sort of trying to help... Was sort of helping me learn how to play... Um, well, anyway... It was mostly just because of the, the price of the malls. But thing is, though, they're not as expensive nowadays, uh, it seems. Um, but yeah, uh, I've been looking forward to 8th edition. I've been looking forward to it a lot. And I've been getting back into it. Thank God my some of my uh, friends have been getting back into it. But um, whereas they all bought their codex, sorry, their indexes, um, I decided to stop playing until I got my hand on the codex. I know there are a lot of websites out there and it's very easy to download a PDF or like again I have an app called Battlescribe which allows you to have the it doesn't give you the sometimes it doesn't give you the complete in-depth rules in terms of uh, what models can and cannot do but I wanted to actually have I wanted to stop playing until I got the codex. So I placed an order for this on Friday. It is the Collector's Edition Chaos Space Marine Codex. It has a, it's a, it has exclusive uh, cover art. Um, very nice. There's another image of this picture with much more vibrant colors. Um, like, again, I just absolutely love it. Hold on, I need to switch my eye a bit. <clears throat> but yeah, I absolutely love the artwork. My friends were like, "Why? Why did you not just buy the codex?" Like I'm like, "No, I want, I want, I want to actually have the collector's edition, and I really love it. Like it absolutely looks absolutely goddamn amazing." Now it doesn't offer anything special. I thought there was a bit extra stuff. Actually, there might be. Let me just check the box. Maybe I missed something. Cause like, no. So yeah, I thought I was getting a poster, but no. The the thing that I saw in the video, sorry, the thing I saw on the website is actually just the second picture you get of this. Uh, it's a bit more easier to see the picture. Uh, let's see if I can find it. Uh, on the inside we have this like cool sort of like, sp oh shit, no, the camera fell. Oh no. Okay. Um, we have this sort of cool like sort of spacey type of stuff. You can see like the corn symbol right there, but yeah, and then you see the what is on the cover of the um, the codex. You get that what's actually the cover. Um, now when you open it, the pages are a bit wonky, but it's okay. There's the cool thing, like, and then it's like it says Chaos Space Marines, veterans of the Long War. You get an introduction. Which is basically, oh, here we go, here's the secondary art image. Um, we see some Imperial Guard. Yeah, some Imperial Guard and some Blood Ravens, I believe, if I remember correctly, fighting against a whole um, uh, waft of chaos. Now, again, I believe that the chaos you see in this picture are Black Legion, they have the black and gold. You don't see Abaddon. But it's because of the black and gold, it's safe to assume that they're Black Legion. Uh, I actually run my own custom uh, Legion, which I call the Black Spartans. 
Um, they have the pri- because they're, I'm using the fact that in the lore that there's the missing Primarchs uh, to say like oh yeah um, Nightmaris is the Primarch of the Black Spartans and he joined uh, his brother Horus um, but yeah it gives you the general um, it seems like we might be getting a bit more not, uh, lore on the for chaos uh, in this which is great it talks about the traitor legions, like the Pacific legions that betrayed. There's the Chaos Renegades, but then lot, lots of stuff is forgotten. And then, like, where... Like, it gives you actually, like, a proper, like... Uh, in the year N30 to N31, the Age of Betrayal, the Great Crusade. And then it goes into the Horse Heresy, the fall of, the, of a Primarch, the Long War Begins. And then it goes up to M, M40... To M41, the Age of Apotheosis, the Double Edged Swords, the First Armageddon War, the Fall of Nova Terra, uh, the Wolf at Bay, the Great the uh, the Great Rift. So yeah, you get all this cool uh, actual lore, and then um, for the more then the next section of pages are dedicated to talking about the lore and the history of some of the more in depth. Uh, legions, the more famous ones, such as the Black Legion. Uh, it shows you the different types of Black Legion war bands. Uh, we got some cool images here. Uh, we got the Hounds of Abaddon, which are the Corn Berserkers, the Black, the Sons of the Cyclops, Zinch, uh, the Bringers of Decay, Nurgle, and the Children of Torment. Again, I love the artwork. Um, Definitely worth the money. And then we get the Galaxy Divided, which seems to be I'm not sure if it's the entire world. It doesn't I don't I don't I wouldn't imagine it is. Sorry, I don't think it's the entire galaxy that's in one of our 40k. But yeah, it's a cool thing, like there you go. Yeah, it's pretty cool. I'll probably try, um I'll probably add the, um on my Discord channel, uh which again I need to start adding links to all my pre existing videos. Um, I may end up starting out things like that. Now again, it doesn't just talk about the Black Legion, like I saw there, and then goes into the map. Then it goes into the history again. And then now we get into the other legions, such as uh, the Alpha Legion, which which are a fun legion. Like I love their lore that they're the master infiltrators. Um, you get the different faces of Hydra, which again, I think it goes into... Um, what generally they do like I see like brother um no it goes into the faces of uh, of the Hydra uh, huh. yeah so it talks about the different leaders of different uh, subdivisions of the Alpha Legion like we have brother brother Anaspus guardian of the intensing flame now that his chapter of the what's it called um Alpha Legion is a blue wet silver Hydra then we get Brother Nokia, second sentinel of the Dractani Revenants. His is a bit more of a, no, they're the top two ones. As you can see, uh, Brother Nyokos, second sentinel of the thing, he has more of a greenish uh, hue, whereas uh, the first one that I talked about has more of a blue with a silver hydra. And then there's different ones. There's one that uh, seems like he's got under possession. And then afterwards we go into the Iron War Iron Warriors, which is a re- look. I love now that they have their own special rules. Uh, we'll get, I'll talk about that. Uh, some hopefully at some point in this video. My phone was at thirty three percent power. I don't know if I'll be able to cover it all. But yeah, the, I love how the Iron Warriors are like cyborg. Like they cyborg them their arms. They have the most mutilators uh, in their chapter, but they're also the greatest in terms of the chaos. They're the best at using. Siege weaponry, and then it talks about the different leaders of different subdivisions, but they all still maintain that silver, gold, and grey. And then I think that I think that it gives you the battle cry for each one. Hold on, um, here it is for our, the battle cry of the Iron Wars: Iron within, Iron without. Alpha Legion, war is simple. War is simply the galaxy galaxy's hygiene. 
I, mm, I'm not sure about I understand why they get that, but I'm sure it comes down. Then we get to a really cool uh, chapter called The Night Lords. Now, The Night Lords are one of the most inter second interesting, in my opinion, because they're one of the... There's only two chapters. Two There's two chapters that have very iconic, very unique look to them. Uh, Iron Warrior has been one of the first because the, uh, often if uh, they have like cybernetic parts, like they'll have cybernetic arms or limbs, so and or they would have like mechanical arms sticking out, uh, as with their iron the war smiths. Um, but yeah, um, it's again when you you can the, um, the, when you look at an Iron Legion, you know they're Iron Legion because of those extra parts. And that's why if you go into gamesworkshop.com, you can actually buy conversion kits. So you can not, so when you buy a, a box of cast space marines, you can attach, instead of attaching like normal parts, you can buy the conversion kit and then glue on these extra arms that make them look like more Iron Legion. Here's the second army that has a similar thing, but I noticed it's more about their helmets with this group, next group, and that is the Night Lords. And I love how like the, everyone else has like their talk about like their discussion thing on regular paper like they like, this regular paper but then for the night lords when you start learning about their lore and all whatnot it's a pure black page i i just love that i it's really good that they do this um night lords are amazing they're, they're they have i love how like they have the war talents like every war town is part of the Night Lords uh, army, and other armies. Don't, if another army has war talents, it's because they hired out some war talents from the Night Lords. It's really amazing that the Night Lords seem to be like this sort of mercenary group amongst the chaos. They're like, oh yeah, you want some uh, war talents? Yeah, 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 yeah. You can have some. But yeah, they have uh, their general motif, especially with their conversion kit, is they seem to have like bat wings on their helmets. I'm not a big fan of it, but I do love the war talents, how they have that sort of like mechanical wings going on instead of the general jump pack. Um, then we get the word bears. Now, at some point, I, <laughs> at some point, I'm probably going to start uh, a discussion video going more in depth about 8 edition chaos where i talk about each of the chapters go back their history talk to give you my thoughts about them the word bit now again all these new chat all these chapters that i'm meant i'm talking about they all in 8th edition they all have their own special rules uh and, and some of them are absolutely amazing um now i have an interesting interesting note on the word bears uh, let me check my wardrobe real quick. Uh, let's see, is it in here? Uh, I no. That's a real shame because there's a book that I got. Oh. When I'm talking about the night, um, I'm probably gonna finish the book then before I when I do before I do their proper introduction video. Um, if I'm remembering correctly, uh, I could be wrong. I could be wrong. I haven't read the codex uh, in. I haven't read the lore sections in depth, and I haven't finished that book. But if I'm remembering correctly, the word bearers were actually the primarch of the word bearers. He was the one that was going around to Imperium of Man. This is before the Horse Heresy. He was the one that was going around to the Imperium of Man and making them worship the Emperor as a god. And in the book that I have called The First Heretic, um, there's this whole situation where um, he created this whole planet. Like, he built this whole planet. They were all worships of Ting. But then, I think it was the Space Marines. It was a chapter um, with a Primarch. Death. So, it's one of the 18... They do a complete exterminatus on the entire planet. He comes down, he's like, Oh, who did this? Who's the heretics? Who's the renegades? And then you see the, the thing, again, I think it was the Space Marines. 
they're coming down from their ship. It's like, yo, uh, man, like there, it's about to be a full on, you know, fight between the board uh, from this guy, Logar. Let me just see. Actually, let me see here. Da 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 da. Burberry's is an angel warrior fanatic whose history is stitched in blood. Da 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 this other Primarch and this other chapter with his men. And then the Emperor just pour it down. He just, just like, teleport right in between them. The, the, the rest of the Marine, all the Marines had to look away. They, they, even with their helmets on, even with special filters, you know, for intense light, dark night vision, you know, all, even with all those special filters in their helmets, they couldn't look. It was, oh, I love reading that bit. Because it, it, it's read from their perspective rather than the Primarchs. But yeah, the Emperor was just like having none of it. He was like, I am not a god. I forbid. I got rid of religion because because it causes the divide. It divides people and, you know, blah, 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 blah. But uh, anyway, so yeah, the word bearers. No, I haven't finished reading the book and I haven't fi finished reading this bit. I want to read both before I get to talk with the word bearers when I, if I'm going to do these, which I probably am going to do these discussion videos, because that was, that, it's going to be a very interesting thing. Uh, then the coach shows us the different faces of um, the word bearers, um, different named characters from probably different books. And then here's their words, cast down the idols, destroy the temples, slay the priests, show these fools that they worship nothing more than a rotten corpse. That's what I find really interesting, because like from what I gathered, the word bearers became as space marines. They were very forget fanatical. They were spreading the, the 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 word that the emperor is a god and whatnot. But then during the Horus Heresy, that's what got twisted. So now they're like, no, he's not a god. Like you know, and it was just funny enough because the emperor did not want to be worshipped as a god. But then the Imperium of Man started referring to him as the god emperor. So. That's why I love the show, Te uh, If the Emperor had text to speech because like, I just love the idea of his reaction. Next chapter, we have the World Ears. Now, very fun, especially if you're a Chaos player. Just an amazing Legion. Um, oh, they're just amazing. And I love the artwork that they have associated with them here. Um, here we go, a bunch of Cone Berserkers just laying waste to, but like just in a bit, just in mid charge like there's there's some tactical uh cast based marines uh you know laying some co uh, cover fire with bolt guns uh but yeah and then you have um different faces of the world ears we actually no normally they always go with some sort of shade of red we have one here, um, Brother Vexarius, anointed member of the Devonite Warrior Lodges. So yeah, this guy wears uh, white and silver. Sorry, white and blue. See? Yeah. Yeah, what the hell? Um, oh. Then we get into the Emperor's Children, which is... Again, I, I plan to go into more in depth of everything. Don't worry, folks. Um, these are the the main Sinesh worshippers. Uh, then we get into the Renegades, which is just a different stuff. We had the Crim like the Crimson Star, which got introduced in seventh edition. They became very popular uh, th there and here. We have also the Red Corsairs, which is basically just pirates. Um, very interesting there we have the cleaved the compact of misery the blood disciples the scourged the flawless hosts the purge and oh here's more uh, brazen beasts sons of vengeance invocators the heristari the grey debt debt mongers magma hounds corpus brethren and that's it then we get another cool uh, picture Oh, here we go. We get another really cool uh, image of some chaos, you know, marching forth. 
a Chaos Lord and Terminator on and then just a regular Chaos Lord in front. Now, we, now again, the, I love how they really emphasize the lore, because now we have, uh, the next segment is now the lore on um, the individual models. Like we have the Lords and Lord and Dame Princes, Chaos Lords, Exalted Champions, Sorcerers. Now again, as it does HQs first, we have the War Smiths, uh, Dark Apostles, and then we get the the bulk of your army chaos, which is which is often the bulk of your army, the chaos base marines. We got some Terminators, Possessed, Raptors, War Talons. Uh, now again, it's, I saw an image uh, back in Emperor's Children where a War Talon was not wearing. The, the blue and gold of uh, the Night Lords. So I might, so things might have changed, but uh, so I'll read that. Uh, the Obliterators, the Mutilators, the, the, then we have this tank. It's just a whole, it's two whole pages on tanks, I believe. Yeah, it is. It's, it's two whole pages on tanks. From the Rhino to the Vindicators. What the, wait a second. Oh yeah, there we go. Then there's the Land Raider. Uh, I was like, what the hell? Where's the Land Raider? Uh, then we get your Cannon Fodder, which is uh, your either your Chaos uh, Cultist or your Spawn. Then we got the Daemon Agents, such as Forge Fiends, Mauler Fiends. I haven't used any of these yet, so I don't know. Oh, we got the Helldrakes. Oh my god. Helldrakes. I want the Helldrakes so badly, as well as the Defiler. Both of these would be huge boons to my army. Then we have Hellbrew. I have a Hellbrew. Absolutely love it. It's a, it came in. It's so handy. If I if I had time uh, downstairs alone and with enough time, I'll probably show you um, what some of these models look like as in terms of you know actual tabletop. Then we have the Lord of Skulls, one of their most expensive units. Uh, actually, it's the most expensive model in the entire hobby uh, for Chaos Space Marines. Now we're getting into... we Now we did do some, some HQs, but now we're going to do the devoted chapters. Sorry, the devoted units. Now these units are always devoted to a god. You cannot have them not devoted to a god. And there's actually a, a, a HQ or a character that's associated with them. For example, we now have we, we have this. The next two pages are the Corn Berserkers, uh, worshippers of the, the Blood God Corn, as blood for the Blood God. You know? uh, then you have Karn the Betrayer. I have a friend who really loves Fields and him. Apparently, he's got a big buff in this edition as well as Abaddon. But we, uh, again, I haven't seen, I haven't played much of 7th edition, so I don't know for certain. Then we got Rubric Marines. Interestingly enough, uh, Rubric Marines weren't always called Rubric Marines. They used to be called Thousand Sons. But then, um, because of the lore that the Thousand Sons was actually a legion, uh, they decided to change the name of this uh, model to um, Rubric. Now again, these models have to always be dedicated to a god. They cannot be. They have to be dedicated to one of the four gods of chaos. They can't be undivided. So yeah. Now again, I plan to. I actually have some deck guards. So I plan my black spartans to. Uh, the black spartans is always going to be my war band army. So my warlord army. Whereas then I'm going to have other detachments for different jobs. Such as the deck guard, they're going to be. I'm planning, hopefully, to build my deck guard up to be my sort of slow march. You know, like dun 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 dun. Like they, they, they're the ones that will hold my objectives. You know. But yeah, uh, the rubber greens. That's the only other unit that can take on extra casters. Their their leader, each each leader of a rubric marine uh, uh, unit, is a sorcerer. So that gives you a lot of extra psychic abilities then we got the plague marines the slowest of all the mod of the marines it seems except for a lord of contagion uh, most of these mods can move six inches uh, plague marines can't move five and a lord of contagion can only move four 
So yeah. But again, they're they're tanky from what they have. I'm not sure actually. I wonder if that's part just because of the it was a deck guards thing. Let me see here. I'm jumping ahead. So that's another thing I like about it. you get this little like bookmark type of string thing. I'm actually going to jump to the Plague Marines um, in the main codex. So I, the, I, me and my friend went halves on buying uh, a box called the Dark Imperium. You get Space Marines, pro the new Primus Space Marines with, um, what's it called, some deck guards. And, and you, you, get an, you get a small data sheet that gives you all the information you need to run the models that are in it. In the box, and let's see here. All right, they have Death to the False. Um, um, that's a new ability. That is a new ability. They actually got a new ability. Interesting. But okay. Anyway, um, they have this. This now here's where they get uh, tougher. I'm actually gonna uh, uh, keep my finger in there. I'm actually gonna look at. Uh, give you the comparison of a cast space marine unit with plague marines. Okay, uh, movement six, movement five, weapon skill and ballistic skills are three plus on both. Strength four, strength four, toughness. Here we go. Toughness five on the plague marines. Toughness four on the. So yeah, they're they're a little bit extra tough. They're one wounds. Four one wounds. Um, Plague Marines have the same amount of attacks as Chaos. Their leadership is seven, and the same. Their saves are the same. Okay, so yeah, they're a little bit harder to wound than regular things. But here's where it gets interesting. They have the ability called Disgustingly Resilient. Each time a model in this unit loses a wound, roll a d6. On a ro roll of five or six, that model does not lose that wound. So basically, they can survive longer. But now here's a new ability that they have that I wasn't aware. Plague Marine equipped with two plague knives. A plague Marine equipped with two plague knives, a plague knife and a bubonic axe, or a mace of contagion and bubonic axe, has attacks characteristics of two instead of one. That's new. That that was not in um, the data sheet. So this must. Now again, the indexes were for sort of play testing. They weren't. They weren't the final codexes, so things might change. So that's interesting that they got. They added this extra ability to raise their attack values up. So a play champion who has a uh, the, the mace and a plague knife could end up getting like you know three attacks in rather than just a two. That is very good. And then plague weapon, you can reroll wounds of one for this weapon. I'm going to take Plague now, so Plague Marines, like, why wouldn't I? You know? Okay, so yeah, Plague Marines, very tough. Like, each unit has, each of these specialists, that's what they're often sometimes called, specialist units as well. Um, they all have their specific team. Plague Marines are all about taking, like, they're tough, like, you know, they're t the tanks, and to put them in D&D &D terms. The uh, Rubric Marines give you that extra bit of sorcery, but now they do have some very unique weapons now that I probably will get into later. Corn Berserkers are great because they have just so much melee. If you get into melee now, if I were to play uh, Corn Berserkers, that is it. Like, oh wow. I've had HQs nearly be killed from one squad of Corn Berserkers. Okay, now we're getting to the Noise Marines. Uh, a lot of people are not big fans of Noise Marines. Um, I would run some Noise Marines just because they have they tend to have weapons that have long, longer reach than normal weapons. And they tend to affect the morale test a little different. Now, they have a unique character as well uh, mentioned with this. And his name is Lucius the Eternal. Pretty cool character. I'll get into more in depth about him. I'll probably do a separate. Se I'll probably go into depth about each chapter, and then go and then have another series where I go in depth about each character that I know, that I can read about. Uh, then you have Fabius Bile, uh, Huron Blackheart. Huron Blackheart is in fact the pirate of the Red Corsairs. He's the captain. 
Fabius Ball is an amazing scientist, I'll read about him. His lore got changed from it, the last codex that I actually have. Uh, and I believe in this edition, uh, they've reckoned this so that his experiments are failures, whereas in the last codex they were successes. Uh, uh -huh. Yep, there we go. So yeah, I was right, they completely uh, reckoned his lore, so that now his experiments are always failures or they're deformed. I'm a little disappointed in that, but oh well. Then, now you get, Chaos got uh, two new units uh, in this uh, hobby. Now, technically they're getting a whole, technically there are technically newer stuff. Uh, some stuff carried over from 7th edition near the end, uh, like thousands the uh, thousand uh, sons, they got their whole their own codex they did. Um, they might be getting a new one uh, for this edition, I'm not sure yet. But the, there is one already that is getting it, for definite getting its own codex, and that is the Deckard, the sons of Mortician, one of the Primarchs. Now. I'm okay with that. I, I like the fact that there are some new models, but the problem is they're chap they're Legion exclusives, which means the only detachments that can have these new Deck Guard models is if you're running a Deck Guard detachment. Now again, I plan to have a, a detachment from of different you know legions doing different things. Like I'm if I'm gonna have like a like I'm. Probably gonna have um, Iron Warriors lead my uh, what's it called Havocs and vehicles, but it's, it still annoys me that for run of the mill chaos, run of the mill, non non exclusive stuff. There's only two new units: Exalted Champions, which are a new um, HQ option. So. And then you get the Fallen. Uh, the Fallen seem good. They're, um, it's hard to explain them. But yeah, uh, the Fallen are led by Cypher. They're technically Fallen Space Marines. But, um, but yeah, technically everyone's Fallen. But okay. And then we're getting on, and then here's Abaddon to the spoiler with two weapons. Uh, we got we got some demons that uh, that you can summon, the blood letters, the horrors, the plague bearers, the demonites, and that's it. Uh, that's another thing they changed. Uh, it used to be that uh, you can get free models if you took the conjuration uh, path with your sorcerers. They changed it now, so now that, now any Chaos Space Marine character can um, perform, and instead of moving uh, that turn, a character, say for example, Karn the Betrayer, okay, say he's at the front of the battlefield, he's, you know, swinging his axe, he's shooting that shit, you know, like he's tearing into shit, but he needs a bit of extra backup, there, there's so much terrain in the way of the other guys that can help him, so... I decide instead of having to move, I can perform a demonic ritual, which means I roll some dice, and that helps me determine which creature. Now, only demons with the demonic ritual tag can be summoned, so that's an important note. Uh, we're going to get into that now. 
yeah the next pages are just talking about um, some basics of built like in terms of detachments no chaos specific detachments but uh, it says look to the core rulebook for detachments which I need to get okay uh, demonic ritual here it is um, instead of moving in their movement phase any chaos character can at the end of at the end of their movement phase attempt to summon a daemon unit with this ability by performing a demonic ritual. The character cannot do so if they arrived as reinforcements this turn, or if they themselves have been summoned to the battlefield this turn. If they do so, first choose one of the four cast guards. Okay, okay. So yeah, uh, for example, my Primark, my model, the Terminator Chaos Lord, He's not devoted, so I can pick any god each time he does one of his summons. Uh, so yeah, it's great. That's no, great, uh, but again, we're using Karn as this example. So Karn, so Karn the Betrayer can only summon gods from Korn. So that's the blood letters that we mentioned earlier. Okay, anyway. If they do, 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 do for example, Korn character can only attempt to summon Korn demons. Roll up to three dice. This is your summoning roll. You can summon one new unit with the demonic ritual ability to the battlefield that has a power rating equal to or less than the total result, so long as it's the same chaos god keywords you choose at the start. This unit is treated as reinforcements for your army and can be placed anywhere on the battlefield that is within 12 inches of the character and is more than 9 inches from the enemy model. If the total rolled is insufficient to summon any unit, the ritual fails and no new unit is summoned. If a summoning roll included any doubles, your character suffers a mortal wound. If it is contained any triples, instead suffers 3D mortal wound. So avoid doubles and triples. Ready? There's trade as reinforcements for See, now when I looked back at the index. Do I have the index of my computer? Hold on, give me a sec. Because when I looked at... Last time I looked at the index, there was a special uh, segment in this that pointed out that Chaos Demons uh, were counted as part of your army. Like, you had to first have... You had to have them on your army list. Um, you had to have them on your army list. Uh, but they, you know, were they were technically in reserve, and the only way you can deploy them was by doing the ritual. Let's see here. No, oh, that's my other thing. Is it in my OneDrive? Documents. No, my friend sent me the the index. Maybe it's in my drive. Cause that's some very interesting that that might have changed. And if they did, yippee! But they didn't. Hmm. Now again, I've already have plans for even if they didn't change it. No, that's Crystal Strat. Is it in my one drive? That guard, army campaign, and black planet for me. Is this a sorry, folks? Yeah, here it is. So we need to scroll down to the section that involves uh, chaos demons. Okay, this thing is not fully loaded. There we go. There's warp talons. 
we're near the end. Luckily, um, the demonic ritual is at the end of all this. That girl. So the thing is, um, there you go. Demonic incursions. Oh, here we go. Demonic ritual. Let's zoom in so I can read this. Okay. Uh, uh, this can trade as for our prison. It's the same wording. Oh yeah, it was in the rule book. The rule book had a a thing for reinforcements that mentioned the monarch ritual. Um, I'll ask about that, but yeah, it's a great way to get your reinforcements where you need them to be. Especially uh, in normal situations. Okay. Uh, the next... Is there any other abilities? Oh, yeah. In this edition, um, they've made a whole bunch of new stuff. Like, there's now keywords, which help determine which abilities apply to which things. Then there's also Legion keywords. Um, like, and then there's Mark of Chaos. And All right, here we go. Now, the Legion is great because. Ooh, it's a word beyond. But yeah, uh, in some cases, like me running my Black Spartan army, I, they would have the Black Spartan keyword instead of just Legion. So where it says Legion, I would put in my Legion name, Black Spartans. Uh, and if I gave them a Mark of Chaos. Uh, they would have the keyword of that chaos god. Now there are still abilities, like for example, my Damon Prince. His abilities, if he's a, a, a Damon Prince or a Chaos Lord of the Black Spartans, his abilities would only affect um, the same Legion uh, models. Let me just double check that. Uh, da, 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 da. Where's Chaos? There you go, Chaos Lord. Lord of Chaos, you can re-roll hit rolls of one made for friendly uh, legion units within six inches of this model. So yeah, they have to have matching le uh, keywords. Now, that can be a bit of an awkward situation because as I said before, I'm thinking of running uh, different legions for different roles within when I play open play because that's another thing they changed in 8th edition. In 7th, they had only the one system, a uh, point system, where each model... No, they still have it. It's for competitive play. But for open matches, like friendly matches, they have something called open play, where they have these new, where they have these new cool-ass uh, cards to help ch create random scenarios in the battlefield. But they also have the rule where, op in open play, there's no, like, agreed... Amount now, my friend, um, one of my friends prefers he, he plays open play, but he, he he likes to stick within a certain thing. Like, despite the fact that there are rules that are for when your opponent goes double your points. In fact, he has the new cards that create scenarios. And if I was to go, say, if he plays a, a twenty point army, and I play a hundred point army, I'm more than double his army. He had, he would have a card that would automatically give him the win if he can if he can achieve that objective. So they, that's how that, that's balanced out. Now I don't have, I get the thing is though he can keep that information a secret. He can he can keep the info of that card a secret. So I don't know what he might have the whole plan out about trying to achieve that objective. Whereas I might I don't know what the hell's going on. I would have no idea. <laughs> then all of a sudden wait what you instantly win what show me that card <laughs> but it's fun like I, I love open play but yeah um, so open play comes with some risks like if you go too high above your opponent um, they could have an instant win condition so there's that uh, They now all uh, there's a, a cool ability that uh, marines get as well called dead to the false emperor if we're in melee combat 
uh, during the fight phase, which is you know where melee combat takes place, uh, if we roll six plus, we get an extra attack. Very great, especially for corn berserkers. I think corn berserkers have that to the false emperor. Let me see here. There's, there's the curse breastbones. Demonites. There's noise. But there you go, corn berserkers. They have Death to the False Emperor. Now, remember how I said that each model has their own specialties? The Chrome Berserkers. Remember how I said they, uh, the, the Plague Marines got one attack the set and, and then their leader got two attacks? The same as for the, the Chaos Space Marines. Chrome Berserkers. Um, they have all the same stats as regular Chaos Space Marines, except when it comes to their attack stats. Corn, regular corn berserkers get two attacks. A corn berserker champion gets three attacks. So an average squad is uh, one champion for berserkers. So that's that guarantees you ten attacks. That one squad, ten attacks. Wait, no. Four times two. That's a. Then the champion gets three. Sorry, 11. They get 11 attacks. Um, they also have this really cool ability if you give them the Icon of Venge... No, Icon of Wrath, where they can re-roll their failed charge rolls. Um, but yeah, here's where it gets really cool with them. They have Blood for the Blood God. This unit can fight twice in each fight phase instead of only once. So if they charge... The way no no this is where it gets really good, especially if you it's on your turn. They get into they get into range for a charge. They charge. Now because of the rules, they get to, you get the attack first. You get you get to choose you get to uh, take uh, an automatic that that squad automatically goes first uh during in that. So they get their attack. Bam 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 all eleven attacks, bam 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 bam. Uh boom. Is it then you're in the fight phase. That was the charge phase. Now you're in the fight phase. <laughs> Here it is. Very fun. Because it was your turn, you get to decide which unit gets to fight. Uh, get who gets to fight first. So you can pick them again because of this ability. So they can fight twice. So you can pick them again. So before your opponent even has a chance to react. Like, okay, charge phase, bam, 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 they do their attacks. Now fight phase, okay, I pick my berserkers. Bam, bam, bam. You could, if you, you could possibly kill out an entire squad before they even get attacked. But yeah, oh, core berserkers, fucking, oh no. Uh, bloody deadly and tame. Now, Kron the Betrayer, he get, oh, holy bloody hell. Um, he gets six attacks. <laughs> wow. Wow. He gets six attacks. That is absolutely... Lucius gets five. Oh, wow. Does, how much does a normal Chaos Lord get? Chaos Lord. Four attacks. Oh, wow. Did that go up? Sorry, folks. Hold on. I don't remember how it ever getting four attacks. Cast Lord. Oh yeah, so yeah, Cast Lord's always had four attacks. Oh well, I never noticed. I, I did, or I did notice and I forgot. Abaddon gets six as well. Okay. Now, the Fallen. Now, my friend uh, pointed out to me that these guys get more special weapons than the Chosen, which are normally the Elites. Uh, any model may replace its bolt gun with a chain sword. That's if you want to go for melee. Up to four Fallen may choose one of the following options. Replace a bolt pistol with a plasma pistol. Replace a bolt gun with one item from the combi weapons or special weapons list. Replace one bolt pistol uh, with a bolt gun or two lightning cars. Uh, Take one item from the melee weapon list. Uh, one addition fallen may replace his bolt gun with one item from the special weapons or heavy weapons list. The fallen champion may replace his bolt gun and or bolt pistol with one 
item from the champion equipment list. Uh, that was at the start. Champion list. Uh, bolt champion equipment. Uh, power sword. Uh, power mall, power fist, power axe, plasma pistol, lightning claw, chain sword, chain axe, bolt pistol. Huh. Okay. Uh, sorry, the champion can take one item from the from this as well. Okay, combi, that's the combi weapons. But yeah, okay, the champion equipment. Uh, not too bad. Uh, the power swords interesting, but without the psychic ability, smite, it's not that very effective. Uh, the power fist could be very useful because it's an extremely powerful weapon. It just doesn't hit often. Then we get into the Damon Prince. Still, they're oh god, they're so powerful. Uh, four attacks, they take eight wounds, but there's different abilities that they can take. Um, like oh, well, it's just amazing. They are there's actually two versions of Damon Prince uh, there's Damon Prince of Chaos, and then there's Damon Prince. Uh, the one in this codex is the one that's tailored towards. Um, marines they both have different benefits for being within inches of other models um, but yeah it's very like it's still very good um, you have the exalted champion not much difference in terms of the chaos lord except uh, they have different defaults emperor uh, I want to get my lords. There we go. Now the lord has more abilities, and the lord can take a jump pack. Okay, uh, Death to the Final Emperor. They both have. Uh, the Lord of Chaos has an ability that gives other Marines of the same Legion a chance to you know re-roll to hit. Um, and they have the Sigil of Corruption, which gives them a four plus invulnerable save. Now. And then they have the jump pack itself, which means if they have a jump pack, they can t teleport into the battlefield at any turn. But anyway, the Exalt Champion has two different abilities. Aspire to Glory. You can reroll the failed to ruined uh, rolls in the fight phase for friendly Legion units that are within six inches of an Exalted cha Champion. So, okay, the Lord makes it so that your models will hit more often. The Exalted Champion makes it so that they'll injure more often so you can either take one or the other now here this one has something interesting for the dark gods you can re-roll fail to hit rolls for this model if the target is an enemy character so it seems like the exalted champions are great for actually doing damage but they are the individually they're more suited for taking on so let's look at their stats uh, movement uh, same weapon and ballistic skills. The Chaos Lord it has higher ballistic skill. Yeah. Okay. Uh, strength. Same toughness. Same wounds. Five. Four. Attack. Four. Attack. Four. Leadership. A. Leadership. Nine. Saves. Three plus each. Okay. So the Chaos Lord is leading. In terms of just stats, but again, that uh, those ruined uh, rolls that can make the difference. Um, now let's look at their war gear options. The Lord has three. This guy only has two. You may replace a bolt pistol with one item from the pistols, combi weapons, or melee weapon list. This model may replace his chain sword with pist with one item from the tank. So let me check. So that means you can give him power sword, but yeah. The Chaos Lord can take the Power Sword as well, so. Yeah. I don't know. It's, it's a bit of a. Ugh. Uh, then we got the. Wait, where? I haven't noticed the Chosen yet. There's Chaos Lords. There's Daemons. Oh. Hold on a sec. Did they get rid of Chosen? 
There's Fa the Fallen. There's Cypher. Here on Blackheart. Diamond Prince. Chaos Lord. Wolf Smith. Chaos Base Marines. Cultists. Blood Letters. Horrors. Plague Bearers. Demonites. Berserkers. Rubric. Plague. Noise. There's Chosen. Oh wow, I don't know why they kept Chosen so far away. <sighs> but yeah. It's, I love some of the changes they made. And that's me being message, folks. Um, um, again, I just love some of the changes. And I love the, the large section of lore. I love the artwork that's in this. And then here's the Forbidden Armor where you can look at all the stats of all the weapons. You know, what not. I don't really like using these pages specifically for me because like I prefer looking at um now again you will have to use these pages especially for some of the pages where like for example like Chaos Lord can take a power sword. He starts off with a chain sword but you can take a power sword. So I would have to also jump to this page occasionally to get the power sword stats. But yeah. Then we get a nice big image of some ultramarines being completely surrounded by uh, chaos. Oh, what's that there? Huh, some new plague mold. But yeah, it's a bunch of different chaos just swarming uh, ultramarines. Now, if this was in the books, fucking ultramarines will still find some way of winning. Because I even have a friend who's a big um, Space Spring player, and even he says it's bullshit on how Ultramarines succeed at everything. Okay, now we're getting on to um, the lot. This is where it gets really interesting about what army you're playing. Because there's now abilities called Legion Traits. Okay. Okay. Chaos Space Marine Detachments gain the following abilities. Uh, the Spoilers of the Galaxy. If your army is Battleforge, all troop units in Chaos Space Marine Detachments gain this ability. Such, such a unit that is within range of an objective marker and controls it even if there are more enemy models within range of it. If an enemy unit within range of the objective marker has a similar ability then it is controlled by the player who has the most models within range. Uh, as normal. That is great for taking over objectives because like even if they are outnumbered you automatically hold it. So yeah. Re really great. But now in all fairness though it says all troop units. So that's um, elites don't count. So this is more for chaos space marines or cultists. You also get your Legion Traits. Um, now your Legion Trait is based on what I said. Like my army, the Black Swans, are technically labelled uh, Renegade. So, yeah. Um, okay, for the, Blacks, for the Black Legion. Add one to the leadership characteristic of all models in this unit with this trait. In addition, if a unit with this trait advanced... It treats all its rapid fire weapons as assault weapons until the end of the turn. Example, a rapid fire of two weapon is treated as an assault two weapon. The iron now this is why I would run different attachments within my open play army. Um, because like again you get these benefits. Um, an enemy unit attacked by units with th with this tray do not gain any bonus to their saving trials for being in cover. In addition, you can reroll to fail to wound rolls. For units that with this trait that are targeted that t when they target a building. Now that's another key fa factor that uh, is a situation. Like, there are some structures that mods can go into that are buildings. So <gasps> this what makes um, ve uh, the Iron uh, Warriors very great. Because in some scenarios, Space Marines may control like a tower and you're supposed to take over it or you're supposed to uh, destroy it. 
this is where if you have a, 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 a small detachment of iron warriors, especially in their vehicles, like the Predator or Vindicator, you're just going to be standing there, right out, fire, boom, 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 boom. And that thing will drop uh, much faster than it would for other chapters. Uh, here we go into Renegades. Now, technically, this is what my Black Spartans were technically once part of the Black Legion, but they left. So I don't know what would be the situation. But anyway, um, they get this ability. This unit, uh, units with this trait can advance and charge in the same turn. So, yeah, that's very good for meleeers. Um, I don't know how I feel about that, because that means we can uh, advance. I, if I remember correctly, you cannot advance if you shoot, but basically this means that for my melee uh, units, they can, get into the, they can get into the fight much faster. Not sure how I feel about that. I'm just like, ugh. Um, the World Ears, now these are the Cone Berserkers. I may end up having a detachment of Cone Berserker uh, with the World Ears. When this unit takes a successful charge, it can make one additional attack with each of its models in this. So basically, the Berserkers uh, go from 2 to 3, and then the Champion goes from 3 to 4. So that means uh, a, a squad of f uh, four Berserkers where one champion becomes, uh, f let's say it becomes a, a tree. So three, six, nine, twelve, plus then the four, so that's 16. So that's 16 attacks with the first charge. And then they get to attack again in the fight phase. Oh, yeah. That's another 16 attacks. And again, they have Death to the False Emperor, so if they roll any sixes, they get to make another attack. So, yeah, Corn Berserkers, an army of World Ears is, is deadly in melee. It, they're truly true. And again, it says any unit, so that's. So their Space Marines beget. Their attacks become um, two, I, I believe. Let me, just, let me quickly check this. Also, I think they changed it so that unit now revolves to everyone. Because uh, I don't think units. Oh, here we go. Yeah, see, this is this is not even labeled as unit, so that means everyone, except for vehicles, I believe. Yep, yeah, uh, the aspiring champion becomes attack three, and uh, chaos space marine becomes attack two. Yeah. Boom! Uh, Night Lords. Enemy units must subtract one from their leadership characteristic for each unit with this trait that is within six inches of theirs to a maximum minus three. Now the morale phase. That means after you ki if you kill one person, even if you kill one person, that is still now a my. If you have like three units within. Yeah, so if you have three units, so if you like charged uh, three warp talons or three raptors or any type of thing, that one unit will get to minus four if you can kill one model. If you kill two models, it becomes minus five. That can kill, that can kill like lots of other models without even attacking. Uh, Emperor's Children. Units with this trait always fight first in the fight phase, even if they did not charge. If the enemy has units that have charged, or that have a similar ability, um, then alternate chosen units to fight. Even okay, so yeah, uh, Emperor's Children they always fight first, unless you have an ability that is like that as well. Um, hidden in plain sight, your opponent must subtract one from hit rolls. That target units with this trait that that if there are more, if they are more than twelve feet away. So Alpha Legion is great for long range combat because your opponent has to subtract one. So what I would do personally would be like uh, have Alpha Legion teamed up with have an Alpha Legion detachment teamed up with World Deer detachments. Keep them close together. Uh, screen the Alpha Legion in front of the Cumberzergers. Have them fire. And then 
if you see if, then if you see your opponent is starting to close that distance switch them back so that the corners that so that the world leaders are in front and they can go forward it's a it's a very sneaky tactic but it could work uh, then we get the world bearers uh, this unit can reroll failed uh, morale tests for units so yeah Oh, um, but, uh, then we get their stratagems. Like, I, uh, they brought back Chaos Spoons, uh, but they cost CP, which is a bit annoying. Um, the Chaos Boon table used to be something that with any character, if you killed another character um, from the enemy, they get their role in the Chaos Boon table. Now, there was a bit of some benefits or some side effects. It was just weird. Okay, use this stratagem at the end of the fight phase in which one of your Heretic Stars characters, not a Daemon Prince, slays an enemy character, vehicle, or monster. Roll 2d6, look at the result below. If you roll uh, 2, your character is slain, however, before moving this model is, as a casualty, you can add one Chaos Spawn to your army. If you do so, set, set up the Chaos Spawn within 6 inches of your character before removing them. So basically, my Chaos Lord turns into his Chaos One, which is Cannon Fodder. Uh, three, Arcane Arconum adds six to the range of all the character's ranged weapons. Boom. That is a permanent <laughs> plus six inches to all my ranged weapons. Uh, temporal Distortion add three inches to this character's move characteristic. Uh, six, War. Oh, sorry, five. Warp, uh, sorry, strength of uh, Berserker. Add one to ca this character's strength characteristic. If you roll six, um, Warp Frenzy. Add one to this character's attack characteristic. Seven. Uh, choose a boon of your choice. You cannot choose Spondum or Demonhood. 